in the process of doing is is uh, scouring the the world of atheism and getting all the arguments they use to argue against the existence of God. I have 40 of them so far, and I am pre producing a rebuttal to each of those and giving them in a series of lectures at Mississippi State uh, to the Christ to the student Christian Christian student body, and uh, so. Uh, what I'd like to present today is four of those. Uh, and I want to present the biggest ones. What I did is I organized them in sort of the, so the arguments and claims that are the broadest overview of reality and, and narrowed it down to the most narrow treatment of a part of reality. Uh, so um, we're going to talk about the first four, uh, but... Uh, we're going to talk about four of them, but I'm starting with number four, which means I've already covered three, and in covering those three, I set some groundwork that is needed to understand four. But to, to cover the four that I do cover is going to take all the time without bringing that material in. So if, you're having a, if you have a question, uh, go ahead and ask. But give me the time at the end so that, you know, I can, I can finish the presentation. But, but uh, uh, see if these are familiar. Uh, if, if God is real, why is there so much suffering in the world? You ever hear that one? That is the number one argument people say led them into atheism. That one. Okay. Uh, number, uh, another one is... If God created the universe, then God created evil. So it's his fault. All right? You ever hear religion is morally harmful? You know, why? Well, think of the Inquisition and the Salem witch trials. That was all religion-based, wasn't it? Religion is bad. And uh, if God created the universe, who created God? Okay, have you heard them? Can you answer them? Okay, I'd like you to be able to say yes to those by the time you leave tonight. Uh, and if you have insights, share them with me because I'll use them. Okay. <laughs> well, be, for the next bunch that comes across this material to benefit from them. Okay, so the argument from suffering and evil. Why would a loving God allow suffering? Okay, and I am not, I write this stuff, I don't PowerPoint it, so I'm not good at this, but I think all I have to do is push a certain button. All right, the atheist says it is logically impossible to believe that both evil and a good and powerful God exist in the same reality, for such a God certainly could and would destroy evil. They say there is so much evil that is seemingly pointless and of such horrendous intensity that there seems to be no valid reason why a real good and powerful God would allow it. So it seems more reasonable to conclude that he does not even exist. Okay, this is the way the argument goes, typically. There is needless suffering in the world. If God were to exist, there would be no needless suffering in the world. Therefore, God does not exist. This argument in the form of a question is the number one argument reason atheists give to explain why they became atheists. They say they simply cannot accept that God could be real in the face of so much suffering and evil. Let's consider each part of this argument. Okay. Uh, they say there's needless suffering in the world. All right, equivocation is a logical fallacy. That's, that's what puns are made of. You take a word that has two meanings and you switch the meaning and get a joke out of it. Okay, so it treats... Yeah, uh, the fallacy of equivocation starts an argument with one meaning, switches meaning to arrive at a different conclusion. That's what they're doing here. There is needless suffering in the world. All right, the equivocation involves the use of the word needless. Reasonable people realize that a lot of suffering is needless in the sense that it is bad behavior related. 
So individual people suffer health problems due to their bad choices involving smoking, drug addiction, sexual promiscuity, overeating, crime, indolence, and others. And nations suffer war, destruction, poverty, and other calamities due to bad political, economical, educational, social, religious choices. If individuals and groups had made better choices beforehand, they would not have to suffer now. So in that sense, this suffering is needless. But God is not to blame for that, and, and the existence of this needless suffering reflects nothing whatsoever on his existence. But where did atheists get their information that even some suffering is needless? The suffering just mentioned is needful in the sense that it is the inevitable cause and effect consequence of their behavior. Behavior that is often deliberately disobedient to God's moral code for man. This suffering and evil is called moral evil. And it results from the wrong actions such as murder, rape, lying, theft, committed by free creatures against themselves or others, and from the judgment God visits in this life upon those who committed that wrong behavior. But what about natural?